up, everybody? It is Dominic D'Angelo. I'm of SEScoops.com, Dirt Sheet Writer. It is one of a kind with RVD and guests. You guys won't believe who is here. I mean, you won't. Yes, it's Rob Van Dam. Rob, how are you? Imagine that. Jeez, can you believe it? I can't. <laughs> We're yeah, yeah, I can't believe how quick these Thursdays are to each other. I know, right? Well, every we couple hours. On Friday. Last Friday. Oh, right, right. All right. Well, that's so, why. That's, that's why my set timing is off. Yeah. <laughs> No, um, doing good, dude. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sporting the. I'm about to get in the jacuzzi here. Oh, for, for tonight's episode. Yeah, you got. You're rocking that. Uh, the man button there going on right now. Hey, uh, I don't have. I don't have that capability anymore, sadly. But <sighs> then the breaks. We are live though on uh, Rob's YouTube channel at the Real RVD and at RVDTV.com. So be sure to share. Like, subscribe, get the word out. We're also live on Rob's Twitter. So, uh, yeah, be sure to ask a question. If you guys definitely want your question answered, feel free to use the super chat, and we'll definitely get to it because uh, it pops up on here. I always try to keep my eyes peeled for some good ones, too, moving along. But I see we got David Von Boglin in here, Italian. We have EE, Triple E in here. Uh, some good names, uh, some regular names on here. But, Rob, we have a special guest today, don't we? Yes, we do. We do. We do. I've been talking to uh, my friend here for a while about coming on the show, and I just thought, what a wonderful time to do it. Um, a couple of years ago, I wrestled for this promotion in uh, Wisconsin, uh, Frontline Pro, and it was a fundraiser, and the guy that is the uh the number one dude um i mean he's he, he's the boss he, he's running it's his company but he's also the main baby face behind it it's the the whole thing is just like a um, a good energy kind of kind of show it was like uh raising money for um a few different things one of them being uh suicide prevention in the army Oh. Uh oh, Rob froze up. Rob froze up. Guys, chime in, see if is is it me or is it Rob? Just a week. I hope it's not the solar flares again. We had the solar flare issue last time, uh, a couple of weeks ago. But uh yes, if you guys want to chime in, uh use the super chat. Feel free to subscribe, rbdtv.com. Go to uh Rob's YouTube channel. Um on top of that, spread the word out on Twitter and everything like that. Hopefully, Rob will come back. Um, but I will uh, finish what Rob was saying and get uh, his special guest on here. For, he mentioned it, Frontline Pro. Uh, we'll get a little bit more details from the man himself, and that man is Ben McCoy. Ben, how are you, dude? Doing all right, man. It's just my luck, you know. You, you were about to do everything, <laughs> and then he finds a way to hop off. <laughs> and then he hops on off. <laughs> He's just, hey, that's why they call him the Zen Master. He appears and disappears whenever he feels like it. That's it. He's like Batman. <laughs> For real. It's his world. We're living in it. It's totally. That's it, man. <laughs> so. But you're doing great. And the bald works. Don't feel bad about not being. So? Oh, thanks. <laughs> Don't feel bad. That's I've been not... existing with it for about 10 years now. So. Uh, oh, there it's... you go. You're a seasoned pro then. I'm well used to it. I'm a seasoned vet at being bald. So. There you uh, go. <laughs> but hey, why don't you we start off then just uh getting your background as a wrestling fan? Oh How did you get into it and uh what what really intrigued you into the business of it? Well not the business, but just being a fan sorry. Oh man, I I think it's that I, I unfortunately have the cliche uh answer, which is uh I can remember my earliest memory being four years old and going downstairs and watching the recap to WrestleMania three that right. I had never it's like four o'clock in the morning right this is it's dark out there's no lights on and uh i remember watching it and it was setting up for wrestlemania 4 in the tournament and uh and i watched hulk hogan slam andre the giant and my four-year-old brain saw a superhero slam an actual real life in front of you true to god giant and i couldn't compute it, it from that point on i was it was just I was hooked. It was over. Uh, and uh, then the craziest thing happened, and I wound up 
finding out that you can wear pink and black and be really tough and make other guys tap out and wear really cool sunglasses that make you look like a futuristic like rock star. And uh, so, you know, Bret Hart was was the way to go. And I, I was so lucky to be able to meet him with my daughter. Uh, I have, the best story I have about Bret Hart is even my childhood. Is it's uh, We met him very luckily at a show. I took my daughter. She wanted to meet him. He was 35 minutes from my house. I couldn't do it. I couldn't not do it. Uh, we were second in line. And uh, they had just brought his uh, his glasses back out. And she put and we were leaving. And it was like the old commercial where the kid's like, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, my daughter is walking away with us, and she goes, "Dad, his glasses!" And they're bringing the box of Bret Hart glasses out. No, and, and and as they're doing it, Brett sees her say it and calls her over, signs a pair, and he's selling these ones. puts them on her head and says, "Those are on me. Those are on me, kiddo. You have a great one." And sends my daughter off, and I was just like that's insane so 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 that's but as a kid it was that was my guy and that was all the way up until my cousin gave me my first ever tape that had the the magical words of ecw on it oh there you go 1999 which i think we all know is rob and jerry lynn and good god I, i like it was like caveman discovering fire <laughs> it was you know because i had to that point it was doing the clown and bam bam bigelow and one two three kid and bret hart and Shawn michaels and razor and diesel and you had all these wholesome characters and then you watched ecw and it was like oh my what uh, you like it, it was just this explosion of creativity between the, you know, the, the Eddie Guerrero and, 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 and uh, you know, he who shall not be named matches, but also the Eddie Guerrero and Malenko matches that, that a lot, a lot of people don't talk about Malenko enough. I think, I think Dean did some really fine work there that a lot of people don't talk about. Oh, the shooter, man. He was the shooter. Yeah, for sure. So, but that, but then as a fan, you know, what got me through high school was like the, the wow wrestling magazine. Remember wow. Oh, totally. hundred yeah. percent. So wow was how like so I was a kid growing up in a town of a thousand people with one stoplight, trying to track ECW after finding your first bootleg ECW tape mm-hmm. was, was like trying to find you know the gold at the end of the rainbow. So when you would ever whenever you would be able to, like you know your friend's cousin knew a guy from Madison or something like that because we were in the middle of nowhere. You that that would be how you would find it. And my mom randomly went to the grocery store and wow magazine was there and inside the wow magazine was the the uh, paper pamphlet for the ecw magazine and my mom subscribed me and so i was able to keep up and uh and then you know shortly after you know and this was this was i'd already seen rob do the raw stuff and then you know watching ecw in the 99 2000s uh, and then of course they got their television and everything, but like, it was kind of like the staggering between the two. It was, it was, it was such an eclectic mix of, of, of wrestling because, uh, I, I wasn't really a WCW guy. I never, I tried in, in like the nineties and tried to get into it. Uh, I just, I was the guy who always watched it. It was like, that doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was just hard for, it's, it's hard to get behind something. Uh, I, I remember I would use, I used to watch Raw just to see what they would do with Sting and the Crow character because that was like that was awesome and everything else was like the NWO. It's like yep, seen it, read it, took the ride, saw the read the book, watched the movie. It was you know, uh, but but it was it was I would watch for that. Then you know anything ECW you could get your hands on because that was just like you know. I just really, God, there's just so many things that, that float in my mind at that time. You know I mean? I can remember uh, Tommy dreamer getting caned and like, in like never feeling that type of emotion from professional wrestling before. Um, I can remember, uh, uh, we won't let him know this, but uh, I got super emotional when someone broke his ankle and the, cause the streak should have never died. Oh my God. There's so like, to this day, it's like, Man, I bet you he would have won another six months. They would have done nothing. It would have been just this right. Str- and, uh, and 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 of course, uh, I was a big fan of Taz and the Taz. Ah. Mission. The I love the, the 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 almost like Street Fighter character. Uh, I know that- where my phone is, baby. So oh, you, was- can me, right? you guys can hear me. Yep. Oh, now I can see me too. When I, <laughs> when I was down in this little 
square down here in the corner. Oh. It, says, it says everyone can see and hear you, but I didn't believe him then. But now oh, we can hear you. Well, it, now we can hear you. We didn't hear you beforehand when I put you on. But yeah, you I don't know you. what's happening, but um, I won't be surprised if we find out there's solar flares again. Not the solar flares again. <laughs> I it did it again today. It hasn't done it since that day. And earlier today, um, it did the, the same thing to me, and I forgot about it until just oh, now. I just, yeah. in, I just hardwired it in right now, so that's why I'm in a, a different shady part of the house. But <laughs> deal with it. Yeah, dude, got to roll with it. Got to roll with it. Roll with uh, it. Speaking was of that a staircase it. behind you, Rob? That was a sweeping staircase, though. I will say that. Yes. Uh, oh, no. Oh, yeah. No, you don't yeah. see that. Yeah, you see part of the staircase. Yeah, yeah that's like some, uh, that's some good right. shit right there. That's like, that, honestly, that's some Scarface Tony Montana. Yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> Manny, get the Yale. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with that. Nope. Hey. No. I don't know what happened. To no, but that it. was that was the wrestling man. I got into it, and then I fell out of I fell out of wrestling in college because I was going for a television degree, and uh, got back into it uh, after that. And then uh, me and my cousin and a bunch of my buddies a bunch of idiots decided we were going to backyard wrestle because we didn't know schools existed we didn't know that was like a thing uh and we're a bunch of teenagers at that time you didn't you didn't know wrestling yeah no like well because we're from like i said small town one stoplight literally Mm -hmm. spencer wisconsin shout out to spencer wisconsin spencer rockets go go rockets good football team uh great wrestling team uh coach shernitz and all the wrestling guys um but uh but no they, they uh uh, it was such a small town. There was just no way to get that type of stuff. And then me and my buddies found through the yellow pages, a wrestling ring rental. Oh, it was Lance Stansky. And uh, he had this wrestling ring and he rented it to us. Uh, I think he knew we might not be trained, but he did it anyway. Cause we seemed really nice. And we were doing it at like a legitimate location. <laughs> uh, obviously found out We didn't know what we were doing. Pulls me aside and goes, I'm going to a place in Milwaukee. They'll train you. You seem like the only guy who kind of know what you're doing. Do you want to do this? And I was like, that would be great. So I met a total stranger. Uh, knowing I knew him for a grand total of three hours. I drove to his house two hours away from my house. Uh, so it was almost I, as long of a drive to get to his house as I knew him. And, and then the wrestling journey began. And I went to Brew City Wrestling down in Milwaukee and uh, trained under uh, the Beer City Bruiser from Ring of Honor. And oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. He was my my trainer and 